Glad to be still with us. And like I told you, we're doing a comparative analysis of consumer goods second quarter report. Well, we'll start with the turnover. So for the turnover, we have Unilever Nigeria, uh, we have uh, NASCON, we have NNFM, we have Cadbury Nigeria, Nestle Nigeria, Boa Foods, Dangote Sugar, Flour Mills Nigeria, Honeywell Flour, and Vitafoam. So these are the companies that make the consumer goods that we'll be considering today. We'll have the picture uh, displayed right here on the screen now. So we'll look at 2022, 2021, and the percentage change. These are the things we're working with right now. So for Unilever Nigeria, uh, in 2022, what they earned was 43.81 billion naira. That was in, that's in 2022. And of course, in 2021, for Unilever Nigeria, it was uh, 32.42 billion naira. And the percentage change is 35.12. That's for turnover. So for turnover for NASCON in 2022, 25.13 billion naira. In 2021, 17.57 billion naira. And the percentage change for the turnover for these consumer goods is 43.01. And still on turnover, NNFM, we have 4.39 billion naira in 2022. In 2021, NNFM uh, gave us 3.56 billion naira. And the percentage change there is 23.22. For Cadbury Nigeria in 2022, 27.88 billion naira. In 2021, 18.52 billion naira. And the percentage change is 50.50. That's for their earnings. And of course, Nestle Nigeria earnings, 222.45 billion naira. That was in 2022, second quarter. In 2021, 171.44 billion naira. All right. And then for uh, the percentage change for Nestle Nigeria, 29.75. For Brown Foods, 168.85 billion naira in 2022, and in 2021, 151.73 billion naira, the percentage change being 11.29. For Dangote Sugar, 185.46 billion naira in 2022, and in 2021, 131.95 billion naira, the percentage change being 40.55%. For Flour Mills Nigeria, 339.60 billion naira, 339.60 billion naira, and in 2021, 233.70 billion naira, percentage change 45.31. And for Honeywell Flour, uh, 40.67 billion naira in 2022, then second quarter 2021, 33.06 billion naira. And for the percentage change, it's 23.03. For Vita Foam, 35.66 billion naira in 2022. And in 2021, 26.83 billion naira. And the percentage change being 32.88. That's what we have for the turnover. I think I'd like us to start with Mr. Galba. Mr. Galba, let's have your take on the turnover of uh, these companies. Well, it shows you that during inflation, it also reflects in their turnover. Because majority of them, they have increased in the turnover ahead of the inflation. Okay. All right. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Charles, you have to take it up from there. Yes, thank you very much. Well, we've seen the turnover figures, and um, for me, it's expected, you know. But again, yes, inflation has come in, and of course, you expect price of um, the sale of their goods to go up, you know. But again, at the same time, you look at where they are coming from. Uh, 2021, we had the COVID-19 was still on, you know. And for them increasing their turnover, one it goes to show that yes the management is trying to manage their costs very well and we are seeing this um, increase but at the same time investors are more interested for sustainability because you can have this increased turnover we are seeing uh, for unilever we are seeing over 35 percent those are the top line the bottom line we expect it to be more because that is what um, investors are always looking at yes because your turnover could be high but what of your cost of finance cost of uh, sales distribution they tell you diesel we we'll definitely that. get there <laughs> <laughs> so 
But I think um, I must also give them kudos for okay. some of these increase in figures. Yeah. All right. I'd like to have your take on that. Yeah, for me, I would say that uh, most of the companies in Nigeria post uh, COVID-19 uh, aggressiveness or you no know, kind of a commitment to reach their market is a uh, paying off for them. Yeah. And uh, you can see that their turnover is up. It is that one other they are increasing their production. But don't forget that because of inflation, they already mark up in price. That also reflects on what on the top line. But I believe that they are now doing more aggressive uh, sales because of what during COVID-19, a lot of restriction, and even people are not even going to the office for production. Most of them are working from home. I believe like, this is a new trend. But like you said, you know, seeing the top line is very very important analysis. When the companies sustain the top line, it means that they are eating to a new market or they are adding to what more product that is expanding their world, their seas. But what is very important to every one of us that are investor or analyst that at the end of the day, having a top line that is you no know, robust is very good. We want to see your what your bottom line, which will see that uh, you know the cost of finance is not mentioned and every other cost associated with production, cost of sea and others has gone up. That's why their their uh, bottom line is a bit uh, small compared to the top line. But the good thing is that consistent and also sustainability is very very important at the end of the day but well, i believe that for you know, consumer sector they will call a uh, consumer you no know, discretionary and consumer staples but there are some goods that consumers will naturally you no know, kind of reduce their consumption or put aside now that inflation is high and the purchasing power is also low but there are some goods whether there is inflation whether there is a uh, you know uh, uh, kind of economic uh, you no know, downturn downturn people who have to eat those uh, products for that Investors are looking at those companies that they have, their product or their services is what is in elastic demand. Whether they increase price, there will still will be demand for that. But I think that is what we're looking at. That's why I said the consumer uh, income and consumer was staple food. These are the things we want to look at. Where they will put in the money because if you are before, you want to buy new cars now, you think you release buying new cars, but you want to buy what food and other things that will take off you. These are what we're looking at. Food company and money sell. You know the privileged companies or consumer goods that their product is what we need on daily basis. Their sales price. will be what will remain up. What matter is that the cost of running business is what is going to at the end of the day affect you and I as what well, as investors because if they are paying us what is not related to the price or no, no for that demand for their shares will be a bit down. Yeah, just to even add to okay. what he has said, you know, as a young investment analyst when we started, then Unilever was one of our best. You know, then you can compare Unilever with Nestle. But look at what is happening to the But again, I normally say, even I can even ask uh, Ambrose here now. I say, when he wakes up, the first thing he does, maybe he will pray. The next thing he will do, he'll be thinking your, of. Your, your personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll he be thinking of, you know, to brush his teeth. Yes. He's using what? Close up. After that, he wants to He's take. toothpaste. Toothpaste. Yes. Okay, sorry, toothpaste. <laughs> again, he wants to maybe take tea. He knows what he will take. Maybe lip tea. Sorry for that um, advert. Then after that, maybe he wants to. After having his baits, you know, he wants to use certain ointments. All these are being produced by Unilever. So Unilever is producing essential things that people require. Like he said, whether the demand is inelastic or whatever, they will still demand this product. So because of inflation, disposable income is very low. You will want to, consumer finance, you will want to, you know, do your budget to make sure that the essential things, you get them. So Unilever stands a better chance to continue to improve on what they have done today. Oh, but I think it's important we go to profit okay. after tax now yeah, because that, I mean, that's where we help us exactly. understand. Exactly. And I, uh, well, uh, we'll, we'll come to him with this profit after tax okay. now. We are reviewing 10 uh, companies. We'll start with Unilever as always. And then 2022, 2021, then percentage change. So for Unilever Nigeria, uh, profit after tax, 1.91 billion naira mm -hmm. in 2022. And in 2021, 714.78 billion naira. Million naira. Million, right? Yeah. Okay, 714.78 million naira in 2021. So the percentage change there is 166.75. For Gascon, 1.54 billion naira in 2022. And in 2021, 1.45 billion naira. That's 5.85 percent change. For NNFM, 168.57 million naira in 2022. And in 2021, 82.86 million naira being a percentage change of 103.45. Cadbury, Nigeria, 2.34 billion naira in 2022. And in 2021, minus 516.17 million naira. The percentage change there being 553.69. Nestle, Nigeria, 27.75 billion naira. 2021, 21.73 billion naira. The change, 27.70. 
Boafoot, 39.31 billion naira, 2021, 34.56 billion naira percent change, 13.74. Dangote Sugar, 20.24 billion naira in 2022. In 2021, 12.61 billion naira and a percentage change, 60.58. Flamus Nigeria, 5.81 billion naira. 2021, 5.45 billion naira, percentage change, 6.69. And for Honeywell Flower, we have minus 2.40 billion naira in 2022. And in 2021, 150 million naira. What we have there is minus 1,697.33 percent change. Vital from finally now 4.54 billion naira in 2022 and in 2021 3.41 billion naira. And then the percentage change is 33.23 profit after tax. Mr. Galba, let's have your thought on this company. Well, on these companies. And where we should look at as an investor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, the connection is really not uh, favorable right now. So uh, let's start with you, Mr. Charles. Yes, the, the, the figures, they are, they are quite encouraging. Yes, we are except. seeing, uh, the, except um, <laughs> that of, uh, which company is that? Honeywell. Uh, Honeywell. Of course, you understand the issues with Honeywell and Flam. The farmers are virtually taking over um, Honeywell. But again, they are telling us that acquisition is going to be strategic is yeah. going to improve food production you know because these are similar companies in the same industry so instead of competing now they're going to annex their the two companies together we'll see improving in food and production yes for um dangote sugar i'll give them kudos and you see that um, sugar issue is a problem you know we're not even meeting the local demand for sugar so and um, dangote sugar refinery has come to close that gap and you can see that their profits was increased you know there were a lot of product strategy they promoted most of their products the 1000 gram 500 gram they promoted it so well in the market and of course they also did backward integration because that is what we're always telling most companies you know and they are not importing sugarcane no? sugarcane is grown here in nigeria so they want to increase that production of sugarcane because that's served as raw material for their production. So a very good backward integration. You see the multiplier effect. A lot of farmers will be empowered because of that backward integ integration because they will encourage the farmers, give them what they need to cultivate and produce to meet what they want to use in their uh, production. So that integration master plan really made it for them to discover and to give us this kind of thing. Uh, Figures. But however, I must also commend them again because despite the macroeconomic headwinds that were going on, to get uh, FX was a problem. Inflation too is there, rising cost is there, but at the end of the day. But some persons will say that I'm going to enjoy some uh, advantage. Well, even if you enjoy some advantage, the issue is still, that's why it's macroeconomic issue. Sure. It will still affect you. Cost of production, does it get a, a, an advantage in terms of the and diesel? It doesn't. Okay, so for Nestle too, I will say yes, they've tried so much, but their cost of sale too has also gone up. Finance cost has also gone up. Well, paying about a dividend of over 50 naira, I think um, that's encouraging. But looking at the price of Nestle too, I will not, uh, I will not encourage small <laughs> investors to go in there. But for what we call to defend your portfolio, yes, defensive stock, I will recommend uh, Nestle for people to look at um, that. But again, you will know that um, whether we like it or not, the government is doing all they can. It's just that we are not getting it. You know, you can see the macroeconomic conditions and some of these companies are still posting this kind of profitability. So we must give kudos to the board and money. I know it's not easy. You know, so I'll leave it there for Ambrose to continue. <laughs> no, oh, well. like, like what you just said, it, it doesn't mean that uh, we should sack every governor and all the all the senators away from that city because we need the uh, corporate Nigeria to come and marry Nigeria for us. Yeah. If they are doing well in this uh, in this uh, space, they are their companies, they are doing Did well. You say that with your chest. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Look at that. We, look at that. We need to take all these corporate uh, MDs, uh, managers to go and marry Nigeria for us mm -hmm. because they do well. Because you no, know, if they can use the little because they have. To be producing this for shareholders, it tells you that 
we need a corporate guys to go and manage Nigeria for us as you know, president, as you know, senior. Oh, well, yeah, so that at the end of the day, they make informed decisions that will do Nigeria to finish where today. Let's let have a part. Let me look at the figure that I just in the market, as you just said. Yeah. For me, the bottom line is what I look at as analysts most. Top line is good because we have a criteria and investor that you must meet this criteria to see your company performance is outstanding. And which most of this company performance, I'll tell you, beat expectation. One, because there's no liquidity in the market, market is not reacting to these numbers. That is one. But two, like he just said, most of these companies that their product they successfully increase their price, or even locally or internationally, their demand for their product, they, you can see the numbers. Like he mentioned, uh, you know, the uh, Dangote sugar. You know, in Brazil, there was kind of a drought in Brazil. Sugar production uh, was not so much there. For me, it was a uh, company like uh, um, Dangote Sugar exporting sugar again. And not only that, you know, the demand for sugar is high yeah. because of what it is for, for industrial, not for consumer. Because we say that sugar is bad for us as human beings. But for yeah. industrial use, the demand is there. Cars. And for that, the, the price is high. And you can see from 12 billion to almost 20 billion profit after tax at the end of the second half. For me, you can project that at the end of the year, you can see that company putting about almost 40 billion uh, profit after tax, which is good. And that will support their price if liquidity comes back to the market. But for me, I've said earlier that. Because of the staple you know, food and for consumers, these companies are successfully pass their cost towards to consumer. And if they sustain this, that will be good for them at the end of the year. But don't forget that if you look at in between the top line and the bottom line, cost of operation, a high cost of finance, have only eating deep into them. But that is why, as an investor, because you are seeing this, it's good that you look at what is the cash flow of this company to know if there is sustainability at the end of the day. Because if cost is rising, earnings is looking up, and so the, uh, your cash flow is declining. It's a red, it's a red uh, flag for, for for most investors. So that as you are seeing these earnings, you are seeing high cost of finance, high cost of operation, high cost of sales. After you see the uh, you know uh, their earnings, which is a profit that as positive, please I will encourage you go back and see their cash flow to see their open cash flow is it maintain an uptrend? Because if that's not enough, that means uh, this number we're seeing won't last. But the good thing is that for the past three years, we have seen most of the Nigerian companies sustaining an uptrend in performance that also supported the market to this level. Good for investors, you know, their present is not, not much fed in the market because we have seen local non institutional investors and the uh, and the uh, uh, high player network player playing the market because they are seeing these good numbers supporting the price and they are payout. And also payout for many companies in Nigeria has been what have improved. For me, it's a good one for the market. But okay. uh, for investors, look at these companies that we don't mention in this sector. I would advise let your one Look at their profit margin, look at what their top line and bottom line. At the same time, look at what their book value to see the current price. I don't their value. Is there upside potential going to the future of this company? If there is, now another thing that is very important you look, look at go and look at their, 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 their what we call a 20, uh, 20, uh, 52 days high and low and see what the price is now. That will give you a clue where you should be in this company. All right, I think that's a very good place to end it. But we won't do that without first uh, quickly looking at the book value per share. So very quickly, we have Unilever Nigeria, 11 Naira 28 Kabul, and then we also have Nascon, 5 Naira 70 Kabul. Now this will be the uh, earning per share, not book value. This will be earning per share I'm saying. This book value per share. What is in okay. Go ahead. This book value per share. So for book value per share, Unilever Nigeria, 11 out 28 Cobble, uh, Nascon, 5 Naira 70 Cobble, NNFM, 18 Naira 16 Cobble, Cadbury Nigeria, 8 Naira 1 Cobble, uh, Nestle Nigeria, 36 Naira 40 Cobble, Boa Foods, 13 Naira 33 Cobble, Dangote Sugar, 11 Naira 26 Cobble, Flamings Nigeria, 49 Naira 23 Cobble, Honeywell Flour, 2 Naira 59 Cobble, and Vita from 12 Naira 38 Cobble. In less than 30 seconds, uh, what's your take on this? Yeah. In less than 30 seconds. Yeah, this figure for me should guide investors what to do. Because looking at the market value, and look at the value, look at is there any difference between a price, that whatever that is on that value, overpriced. So if it's undervalued, what should be the next action? No, it's, it means it's interesting, but you also know your investment objective. If you want, you want, you want to buy, you got the kind of store that should be in your portfolio. For me, there are stuff that will be in my portfolio because I'm a trader and also a long-term investor. But for trading in my portfolio, some of this stuff should not be in your portfolio. For long-term investors, some should be there. Like I said, if you look at the strategic high of this company, you have to look to see where they are, to see where it's margin for what, for capital appreciation or upside potential of this to go up, just to guide you. But on the strength of uh, the book value, it's for you to job. The book value most times is when the company is going for liquidation. And most of the money will just to guide you to match the book value with what the market value to know exactly where the company is. Well, that is the simplest way to evaluate, to evaluate kind of do okay. evaluation for a company. That's why also P ratio 
is very, very key. All right. PHO third, how long right. are going to wait? Uh, we have to stop it right now. Thank you so much. We don't even have one second. Well, many thanks for joining us okay. on the show today. And thanks to all our analysts. Thanks for coming. Thank you too for coming. My name is Perpetua Fasamipita. I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.